So I regularly get asked how I get my stuff from Blender to Unreal Engine. And uh, I've heard people say like, oh, the FBX export is just so slow and painful. And then saying to me, uh, so what uh, plugins do you use to get your models from Blender to Unreal? And I just keep telling people, stop thinking that it's FBX or some plugin or something. Use the GLTF method. So I thought I'm about to do that method myself right now. So I thought I may as well make a video on it. So this is a ship that I made in 3D Coat with other little bits and pieces from Kitbash stuff. And so the first thing that you want to do is to make sure that all of your textures are vanilla. So uh, get rid of any Blender nodes. This has to be like a PBR setup. So we're talking, you know, the usual suspects, base color, metallic, roughness, normal, the usual stuff. No, uh, nothing like a ramp or a hue or a brightness or anything. Uh, going straight into this guy and make sure here's the key thing, because I've seen me go through this process and I'm in Unreal and I'm like, man, this object looks strange. What is going on? And it turns out that I forgot to and I've spent ages Googling it, posting it on forums. It turns out that I've left in a, uh, a node here that's a bit unusual. So make sure it's all normal. So that's good. And then you're going to just literally take all of the objects that you want and select them all. Make sure that you've got it all. And then go to File, Export, GLTF, Blender Exports. Uh, and then you've got to do include. This is important, very important, especially if you've got a big scene and you don't want your computer to crash. Selected objects. And if you're going to be doing this a lot, you might want to remember your export options. Uh, it's worth noting that you can do like a whole bunch of stuff. You notice how I grabbed like a whole load of objects here. So you don't have to do it one object at a time by any means. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that everything and maybe apply modifiers just in case material export automatic i think all of this by default should be good um so yeah let's just try like this and, just it. and export sorry one more little thing to note before you um export if you have anything you're seeing that is unusual like i have a bunch of kit bash stuff that is from old geometry um, that's not necessarily clean. Um, here we can see the normals. So a lot of the stuff that I exported from this old kit that I have lying around has some really weird normals and when they came into Unreal uh, the mesh was just pure black regardless of what um, material that I put on it. So um, all of this was weird and uh, this was weird and even though these pipes here uh, I think they, I'm not sure if they came in okay, but like a lot of this came through not looking too good. So um, when you're in Unreal, you can, I mean, I I don't know if this works all the time because, you know, Unreal is just a really annoying piece of software as we all know. But if you were to find your problem piece, I think in my case, it was something like maybe one of these guys. So let's just say it was this. And you notice that the texture looks really weird and no matter what you do the texture doesn't change you can go into um, modeling which is something that needs to be enabled in your um, uh, i think plugins i'm sure some of you know this already uh, so i i check both of these restart uh, so go to modeling and then in attributes go to normals now this is 5.3.2 yours will look different i think if you're using an earlier version so you've got to go to at mesh attributes normals and for some reason by default it recomputed the normals so all i did needed to do was open it and it would fix it and then i would click accept and uh, annoyingly <laughs> because unreal is annoying when i would do that the mesh would change its location so you've got to deal with these things um, but yeah that's pretty much 
what you would want to do if you have really weird normals or if you are lucky enough that your normals can be fixed in a blender then do that but check them first at least okay now we are in unreal engine 5.3.2 in this case i think it is and we are, i've made a little folder here and i'm just going to right click on it and choose import go to my project folder Yeah, GLB. Notice the file size is quite big because it's containing everything. I think by default everything is pretty much good to go. So the next phase is we've got all of the assets in here. Like unfortunately, um, the one downside is that it will have imported identical assets um, as multiple identical assets. So if you have instances, you may need to go in and, you know, just like you would in Blender, if you're in Blender, you don't want one object t multiplied by 20. You want to take the one object and instance it um, and then duplicate that to save memory. Same in uh, Unreal. So in hindsight, if you want to be efficient, the workflow would be to, in this case, I've got multiple of these. The correct workflow would be to just select the ones that you want, export them, and um, uh, well, reposition them in Unreal. Um, alternatively, when you're in Unreal, you could take one of these duplicate it, you, keeping these where they are for, for the reference, the positional reference. Um, so duplicate instances around and then delete all of the uh, unnecessary ones. So as you can see here, we've got like duplicates, but it's not a big deal. Now we're just going to filter by skeletal or static mesh. And the cool thing about this process is you've just got to wait a little bit for this, but you've got to just grab all of the stuff, drag it into the viewport, I'm just letting this load. Okay, so we're just going to select all of those meshes and drop them in the viewport. Okay, so hitting the F key to, f to zoom in on the selection. And there it is. So the um, there's one tricky thing here, which is going to be the case no matter what method you use, and that is pivot points. Uh, let's see if I can move all these to one location so I don't lose them. Okay. So all my objects are in this folder. So as you can see, the pivot point is in Blender's world origin, uh, which is the most annoying thing for me about using Unreal Engine. But there is a plugin. Unfortunately, I'm using the very latest version of Unreal Engine, which you should never do because uh, all of the tutorials are out of date and all the plugins are out of date. Uh, so when you find a good version of Unreal, stick with it for a good few months. But um, if you could use 5.3, uh, not 5.3.2, for now anyway, while this video is being made, you want to search for a piv uh, a plugin called Pivot. It's $10 and it is the best $10 you will ever spend on a plugin. Um, you literally, I can't, like I said, I can't install it on this because I've got the latest version. And as a punishment, it's not available. But uh, you, li you literally would click on all of your objects and hit a button and all of the pivot points would be on the bottom or the top or the side or the middle. Perfect. Um, but essentially that's it really. All you need to do now is to just um, fine tune your materials so that they resemble the um, blender setup. Yeah, one more thing. I just grouped all of these by selecting all the objects and choosing groups group so if I just group 
ungroup. You'll see they're all separate. The pivot point's down there. And so now what I'll do is I'll select all, right click, group. And now it has given me a nice central pivot point. So that would be a potential workaround. Cool. Okay, so there is one small issue, um, which I think is going to happen regardless of what method you use. I'm not too sure. Maybe you can leave me uh, a comment if you know the answer to this one. But when you bring in your materials, they will come in, like, for all intents and purposes, they may look the same. But they come in in this very elaborate uh, and complicated looking setup here. So for me personally, if, especially if it's just a regular UV mapped object, where you don't have to worry about tiling and texture coordinates, um, I would just uh, delete the material and start over and re-import my textures. And then that will sort that out. But I think, like I say, I, I think that's probably just an unreal thing. When you're bringing in foreign materials, it's going to do something with them. Uh, and it doesn't always, uh, it's not always like a pleasant solution that it has. But uh, still, it kind of looks roughly the same. And you could probably keep it and just figure out how to tweak it. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that.